We had a few experiences that caught us off guard. It looked like the body of a person walking. Absolutely had to be a spirit. My ghost story began at the Rising Sun Inn in Franconia, Pennsylvania. The Rising Sun was originally built in 1739. That's when it operated as a hotel for over 150 some years. So I'm sure that a lot of people had come there and had a lot of people have passed there. When I heard about the Rising Sun Inn, I was absolutely drawn right to it. It was the perfect place to investigate. I'd met Joe a few years ago. He had um, done some research and heard some ghost stories, and he was interested in coming in to check it out. The Rising Sun Inn was a stagecoach stop. Uh, used to have hotels upstairs. I know that it was used during the Underground Railroad to hide slaves in the basement. When you walk inside, there's an ambiance to it that you, you know it's got a lot of history, and like if the walls could talk, it would tell you so many different things. When we went to the barn, we actually had a few experiences, kind of caught us off guard. Well, we do what's called a 60-second EVP session. We try to play back our questions right away, minute to minute, and uh, we actually caught what sounded like a female voice respond back to us. While we were recording, I didn't hear anything. It was when I played back that I actually heard the voice. Whoever this person was was making us feel wanted there. She was really interacting with us and letting us know, hey, I am here. The more ironic thing about that is there was no females that were in the building. At that point, I had no doubt in my mind that the Rising Sun Inn was inhabited by spirits. One of the spirits that we hear about is, is possibly one of the former innkeepers, Mary. We talked to a few of the employees and patrons of uh, the Rising Sun Inn, and they described an older woman being seen on the second floor. So they just nicknamed her Scary Mary. Later that night, I walked into the second floor. I have a flashlight that I set up for interaction with spirits. The point is to try to get somebody to turn the flashlight on. Their answer is yes to any of our questions. I set up a flashlight on a table next to some flowers that I had brought for Scary Mary. And they were asking her if she liked flowers. Do you like them flowers? And right away, the flashlight went off. Do you like them flowers? And when they ask questions, and then you see them responding with the flashlight, it's like almost disbelief. Is this really happening? I also heard a tapping sound. Was that you sewing? It was. And it is really happening. I said, listen, let me say the alphabet and stop me at the letter that begins your first name. So like, if your name is Alice, tell me to stop at A. Do you understand that? I was able to go from A to N with no response, and then all of a sudden, the flashlight went off. N? Is that the right one? Holy cow, man, are you kidding me? We started blurting out different N names. Are you Nora? I asked Nora twice. It said yes. It was just very consistent, very precise. I know without a shadow of a doubt that what happened with that flashlight was a spirit. There was nothing else to explain it. I can take that flashlight and put it on the table and jump on the table, it won't go off. That's the way I set it up. And I'm sure every time I set up a flashlight in any investigation, it's not easily manipulated by vibration. There's no way that that was a vibration. Absolutely had to be a spirit. There was nothing else to explain it. On the second floor is where everybody said that they seen Scary Mary walking around. I actually pointed one of my infrared cameras there and left it there overnight running. The next day, I began going over my evidence. I watched hours of video. There was nothing too revealing. Then all of a sudden, uh, out of nowhere, uh, I'm watching the one piece of footage from the second floor where people were seeing Scary Mary. And to my surprise, I, I saw a full-bodied apparition just pop out of the wall and take five steps down the hallway. It caught me completely by surprise. I didn't know what to do. I had to play the tape back six or seven times before I actually believed what I was seeing. Once I realized that I had caught a full-bodied apparition, I couldn't believe it. When I first saw the tape, I was like, oh my God. Just disbelief. 
and then confirmation of maybe all these stories are true. It appears to me that this thing is coming out of the wall and then taking five steps down the hallway. It was just gliding. It was like almost floating and just had like strutting right through the, the doorway. It looked like the body of a person walking. It looks real to me. You can see the strides of this female apparition walking down the hallway. You can actually see the torso of the body. It's clear. You can see that it's the outline of a person, and it even walks like a person. I've investigated tons of places before. I have never seen anything like this apparition. Well, the night that they have the footage, the restaurant was closed. No one else had access to it. It had to be Mary the Spirit that they caught there. I truly believe that this is one of the best pieces of material out there to prove that there is paranormal. The whole thing was just too good to be true. It just blew us away. With the experiences and the evidence captured at the Rising Sun Inn, it has definitely enhanced my beliefs into the paranormal. Well, now with all the evidence that I've seen, it's enlightened me to think a little differently. I guess seeing is believing, so I'm starting to see it, so I'm starting to believe it. I believe that the Rising Sun Inn will always harbor activity. I think as long as it's still standing there, it's always gonna have guests. I think the spirits are there to stay.